Adesso invece abbiamo il primo dei case study del pomeriggio e quindi I'm going to start speaking in English because it's the first uh, case study is in English and it's uh, from uh, James Cabrera which applied as most of you on uh, of the speakers on uh, the call for paper the public call for paper we had uh, uh, back in uh, October and it's going to talk about uh, the application they built for the website Refiner Refinery29 which is called DisAM and it's going to be a, a walk through um, uh, overall the experience of building it why they built it and what c came out of that um, uh, I'm sure I, I did some mistakes in English but my English is so bad so please welcome Jens Cabrera which in whose English is better than mine <laughs> Get the clicker. Yeah, the clicker is yeah. here. Uh, the green is right in the next slide, and the red is uh, the previous one. Okay, so thank you. Have a good talk. Yeah. Ciao. So, um, my name is James Cabrera, and um, I'm an interface designer at Refinery29. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you have heard of Refinery29 before? Not many of you? We're very popular in the, the States. I'm not sure if uh, we could actually access our content in, here in Italy. Um, but we're basically a content site. We publish a lot of articles. We produce videos. We do a lot of imagery and custom graphics. And um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is the first iOS app that we launched. And it was called This AM. Um, just to get a little familiar with the app, I have a little video of the, a little promotional commercial that we shot to promote the app. And, I have it here so you can watch it. Clicker's not working. You need to go to the next slide. So basically the app gives you eight different things that you need to know this morning. And every single morning at 9 a.m., we send our users a push notification, and it says, here are the eight things they need to know this morning. And it's basically news stories from the previous day, the top eight that we think you should know before you go about your day. And um, we hope that it helps you stay more informed. So if you go out to lunch or whatever, you know what's happening in pop culture because you've read the eight things that we said that you needed to know. Um, so basically, in the first month, we had 50,000 app installs in the first month after launch. And currently, we have about 40,000 active users uh, per month. And what we consider an active user is somebody who opens the app at least twice per week. So currently, we have about 40,000 people who are doing that uh, per month. Um, and today, I'm going to talk to you basically about the design and the UX process that we took to arrive at the final uh, the final app. Normally, if you go to you know, UX conferences and stuff, people will tell you that this is the five-step process. It's a canned process of how you should go about you know, approaching uh, a new product, a new app. But I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about what the path that we actually took. Although this is an ideal like, way to try and figure out what you want to create, it's usually never actually what happens when you go through the process of creating a new app. And it's not really how we went through it. So I'm going to give you a little bit more of a realistic example of how we actually arrived at the final app. And this is kind of what it looked like. Uh, first of all, we had to find an opportunity. Like, what is worth dedicating energy and resources to building towards? And uh, after we found an opportunity, a direction to go after, we, we tinkered or playing around. We 
basically had no limits. It was just the designer and maybe one other product person just playing around with ideas based on what we had identified as the opportunity. Um, and then the third thing is once we kind of had an idea of actual, what we actually wanted to produce, we wanted to define what success meant for this app. Um, and then after that, we actually went ahead and tried to make something. I'll t talk a little bit about how we approached making something. And then afterwards, after you launch the app, design is never done. You have to you know, maintain it and iterate on it. So I'm going to talk about how afterwards, after we launched it, we tried to approach it and make different ways to make it slightly better and uh, a more sustainable app. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the opportunity. So when it comes to content, uh, the biggest opportunity that you have is uh, reusability and recycling. So for content, you don't just want to write a piece of content and then just forget about it. There are ways that you could try and resurface content, like say, for example, you have an article about how to do Christmas decorations. You could always surface that article every Christmas. Uh, the opportunity in content is how do we make those moments, Christmas is just a one time a year thing, but how could we try and find content that we've already written and surface it in front of users in different ways and more frequently, not just once per year. Maybe there's an article that we could surface once per season that's four times a year or even more frequent than that. Um, and the other thing, when you're looking for an opportunity, you often like to look at your competitors. What are your competitors doing? So we looked at a couple other content apps and a couple of our other competitors. And in the year that we were coming up with an idea for launching an app, um, a couple other companies had also just recently launched apps. So these were examples of apps that New York Times did, BuzzFeed did, and Vogue did. And what they basically were were their websites, but just in an app form. And if you're a company that's like a startup, you're trying to conserve money, save money, this isn't really a good thing to do because you're basically duplicating. You're making a duplicate experience. And you're basically having two separate code bases doing the same exact thing. And that's not very efficient in terms of uh, your time and your energy because you're basically maintaining two different things that do the same thing. It's basically like if you're a single person and you need to get from point A to point B and you buy two different cars, it's not very efficient. So that's not what we wanted to do. We didn't want to just take our website and just turn it into an app. Um, so what do we do? Um, and not only that, like we just didn't want to make an app that duplicated our stuff. We, there's already tons of apps that has our content in it. For example, we're on Facebook, we're on um, Instagram, we're on uh, Google News Stand, we're on Apple News, we have a Snapchat channel. We already exist in all these apps, so how do we differentiate ourselves within our own app? Uh, not only that, like these apps are also releasing their own different content UX paradigms. Like for example, there's instant articles on Facebook now. We're producing articles just on Facebook, let alone our own site. Same thing with Apple News. Our articles exist in the Apple News UX. Um, there's also Google Amp now, which is their own template. And then we even have articles in Snapchat. So you start to see how this is kind of redundant, wasteful. We basically have one article existing on several different platforms. And we didn't just want to add another one by doing a duplicate experience in an app. So what we did look at is, you know, what is the difference? Like, why do you have an app versus why do you have a website? What are the things that having a website is good at versus what are, what is it, why is it good to have a, an app? Um, so a popular guy named Luke Robluski said that the main difference between web and app is that on web, you have a lot of reach. And in app, you, you could have a rich experience. So if you have a website, you just have a URL. No matter who you are, what phone you have, you could easily just hit that URL, access that article. You don't need to install an app. It's very easy to access. It's, you're just getting reach. Like People who don't even know you could easily access you. And within an app, you could create like really rich interactions, really cool animations that really adds to the experience. So that's kind of what an app excels at. Um, but for us, you know, this is kind of the lens that we put on it. There's universal access of having a website. It's, accessible universally as long as you have the URL. Uh, whereas in, a, in an app, you kind of just want that routine access. The, the goal of any app is to you know, get onto the user's home screen of their phone. So when the user's bored, they'll see that icon and just routinely check it. That's kind of the, the interaction that we wanted. That's the experience that we wanted. We wanted to make something that was habit forming and like, was a routine for a user that whenever they open their phone, they're like, oh, let's, let's check this app. Um, another place that we looked for opportunity was uh, through data. So you're either in one of two groups when you want to develop an app. You either have an existing product that you want to put into app form, or you 
don't know what you're doing and you want to create a brand new product and you want to make an app for it. So you know, we're in this bucket of having an existing product that we wanted to make an app for. Um, if you're a person who's looking to create a new product, you might, get, you might find your opportunity elsewhere in data. So for us, if you have an existing product, you know, you're, we're looking at live data. We could actually do tests on our live site to see where the opportunity is with our content to, for our app. Whereas if you're trying to build something brand new, you might want to do a user test. Try you know, playing around with different ideas, put it into some users' hands right away to see what might be worth making an app for. But for us, you know, we had exi an existing product already, which is content. So we kind of you know, did some tests. We looked at our data. What type of content were people really going to repeatedly to get that routine, get that routine, that habit, you know, be able to have content that is worth putting into an app? And uh, we kind of looked at three different avenues. So the first thing was horoscopes. We have horoscope content on our website. A lot of people access it a lot. It's probably our number one search on our site for content. So there was an opportunity for horoscope content. Um, there was a lot of interest. There's a lot of visits going to our careers, work, and money content as well. So that was another potential avenue, just looking at our data and our metrics. And then the last thing, which obviously is what I'm going to be talking about today, is uh, this eight things you need to know this AM, which actually started out as an article series on our website. Every morning at 9 AM, we actually published this article, eight things you need to know this morning. And it was basically just the eight things with links to the actual stories from yesterday of the eight things that we think you should, you should know this morning. So actually, you know, this morning we published that article of the eight things you should need to know today. I'm sure since I'm from America, something about the election is there. Um, but yeah, so after we had these three avenues, the next thing that we did was kind of play around uh, with it and tinker. So we're going to play around with these three ideas. So we actually started doing some very light prototypes. Um, we, threw the, we started just having this open field, like no stakeholders, nothing. It was basically just a designer and a product. We didn't want to you know, cloud this process too much early in the thing when we didn't even know what we were doing. So for these three ideas, we kind of tried to make some ideas for apps. So this is kind of a prototype for, for a horoscope app where we basically give you a daily, monthly uh, horoscope, and we attach a piece of content to the bottom that relates to whatever was written about your horoscope. So that was a prototype for that. We actually did a prototype for uh, work and careers content. So we did this kind of question builder. If you're looking for inspiration for an interview, uh, what should I do? And then we surface these articles from our website that you know kind of answers that question and helps you out with your work and your career. And then. Um, the eight things you need to know, this is the concept for the eight things you need to know app. One of the first designs that we did for it which was basically eight things you need to know. You keep swiping up through the eight things, and there it is. You just have it. And when we were tinkering, we like to put these things into actual users' hands to gauge to see like which one is really you know resonating with people, which one do people like. And what ended up happening was this AM was the one that everybody was saying this is the the one that I want to use. This is the thing that I could see myself opening every morning. So we decided to go move forward with that. So now once we have an idea, we, have, we know the opportunity, and we know what we're actually going to produce, um, this is a very important step of the process, which is defining what success means. Uh, what do I mean by that? A lot of people say, oh, success is just making a lot of money, right? No, this is actually you know, determining what metrics are going to say that your app is successful or not. And it's very important to define this early in the process so you know what you're designing for, and you could laser focus your, your user experience towards those goals. Uh, so these were probably the top three uh, goals that we were aiming for with this app uh, in increasing to decreasing order. And the number one thing was repeat app opens. We wanted people to open this thing multiple times, ideally once a day. Um, but if they do it more than that, then that's a win for us. The next thing was completion rate. We wanted users to actually get through all of the eight things. If they dropped out at like one, two, or three, that's not as good as if they actually made it to the end and read all, all of the things and that, that experience. And then the last thing was click-throughs. You know, if they were interested in a story, did they click it and find more, find more info about it? Did we generate a page view from that? Um, the main thing that this, these three things do is keep the project on track. As you start. Uh, inviting stakeholders into this. They're going to have their opinions, and they might not be designers, and it might ruin your whole thing. If the CEO comes in and says, I want this, and it's like completely against the UX, we always go back and we look at these what we define as success, and we take it to him and say, if we do that, it's not going to help this, these metrics, with, which we've said mean success for us. So now that you 
define your su we defined our success, we knew the opportunity, we knew what we were gonna make, you know, it, it was time to actually make something. And um, these were kind of the tools that we started jumping into, you know, we started making uh, prototypes in Envision, uh, I don't know if you use Envision here, um, and we actually started making prototypes in HTML and CSS. Uh, the point of this was to actually get it into a phone and like start playing around with the interactions to see if you know, it, was, it was actually a good experience. And finally, React Native, that's the actual uh, coding language that our engineers use to produce this app. These were you know, some of the fleshed out Envision designs. We have the, the title screen there. Um, this is the, one of the things. If you tap that thing, this is the view that comes up with the link. We have both internal ex and external things, so you could put a New York Times article in this, or you could put an article from Refinery29 in there. And then the last screen is basically just an uh, end gift, just something playful, something delightful at the end to kind of, you know, add to have some closure to the experience. Um, we tried to stick to two very strict uh, gesture principles and basically swiping up and down to get progress to go through all of the eight things and then taps to basically get more content. We tried to keep this very strict. This, no matter what the design was, this was the interaction pattern that we wanted to do. Um, and we did a little inventory of what UI was absolutely, ne absolutely necessary to our uh, app. So the first thing was the top story first. What that means is the, the most important story was always number one, the first one you saw. Some people might argue, you know, make that the very last thing. But what we see from users is that, uh, you know, people will drop off and might not see the most important news. So we wanted to put that first, and that also added to people like seeing value in this, seeing that, all right, if I open this app, I know I'm going to always get the, that first thing that I need to know as number one, the first thing, and I don't have to go through all of them. And since repeat app opens is our first you know, metric for success, that's what we were really aim aiming for. We wanted to have a pro progress indicator there showing you like, how far you were in the experience so they always knew visually how much more was left to go to try and motivate them to finish that experience. We needed to share a button because sharing is very important to, to acquiring new users. And uh, the end gift is just to leave them off on a good note so you know, they'll be happy or they'll want to have something to open this app to tomorrow. Um, some things came up in the process as we invited stakeholders into it. You know, as we got our editorial team into this and more product people involved in this, they had some requests. So we ha uh, started off with this like text-based design, and then they were saying, "What about more content? You know, this is not enough characters to get a story across. Let's add more content. What about images? What about video?" So we actually did these explorations of what would it look like if we added more content into this single card? What would it look like if we added an image or maybe a video? Um, but what we ended up deciding was going back to our, uh, what we defined as success, you know, if we had such involved cards, we wouldn't get users to complete the experience. It would kind of, you know, hurt that one metric just to satisfy the stakeholder need. So, you know, that, that's how we basically use those defined success metrics to make decisions on UX and settle those disputes of should we do this, should we do that. So we ended up just going with a pure 70 character text-based card. Um, so after that, you know, we actually started fleshing out the design. We have a lot of talented designers at Refinery29. We got a very talented art director named Kate Titus involved in this project. And you saw my preliminary designs. I was basically just defining the UX and just trying to make some very, something very quickly but we got an art director in there to actually you know, do the visual design of it. We maintained our UX, but we had a visual person you know, put a little touch to it, that artistic touch that we're known for. And these were actually four different visual, design, uh, the visual designs that we came up with throughout the process. And she made this awesome uh, art direction where you have a deconstructed clock that breaks up into a sun and a moon. And we took all that, we basically started putting it into our prototype and this is actually a demo of our HTML and CSS prototype. Go back. Um, so this actually works in a web browser. Um, it's not playing here, but it's actually an HTML link that we sent to a phone, and we actually had it in uncontrolled user test to see what people would do. Would they try tapping something that's not tappable? Um, the thing that, that, that isn't very good about Envision is that it has to be very controlled. But in our HTML uh, prototype, it acted exactly as how we wanted our app to act. And it was also a very good communication tool for our developers to know exactly what they needed to develop. Um, yeah, and this is just the example of that, 
that prototype working. So this is the actual HTML CSS that we sent to phone devices to test that out and put it in users' hands. So make it better. You know, that's the actual product that we launched that in that CSS prototype. That's basically pretty much what it looked like when we launched. But we did try to make little iterations on it. And um, what we mean by making it better is we want to further increase those uh, success metrics or find out ways to make this app make us money. So this is just an example of a way to try and improve one of our success metrics, which is basically um, we found users getting stuck or like dropping out at certain, certain numbers, maybe around five or six, and we wanted to get them to complete that, that process. So we kind of had this like auto forward feature that we added to it that you know, if they're reading it, they didn't take any action after like five seconds, it would automatically like move up to the next story. Um, and we tried that out for a little bit and it ended up not being very good for us. Like users, we were seeing a drop off in usage. Um, but that's an example of how you could try and make your app better. We also took a look at this end screen. We basically had editors just dropping GIFs in here that were on the internet. But we decided to try these custom little images and we actually took it a step further. Like I said, we have a talented art team and we did all these awesome line art animations at the end. And this is a, an actual quote, and this is from my favorite user. This is my mom said this when she was using the app, and she says, I get excited to open the app every morning just to see what that animation at the end is. And this really like, goes towards that first success metric of like, getting people to repeatedly open the app. That little quirky little animation at the end actually got people to, to want to open the app the next morning just to see that, that crazy little animation. Yeah, and these are just ways that we sold it. Um, but yeah, Hi, I'm Chelsea so Handler. we also sold it to, to Netflix, and that was, this is just an example of how we sold it. Chelsea Handler took over our app for a week and, and wrote all the eight things you need to know. Hi, I'm Chelsea. And just moving that forward, we actually brought this app um, onto Amazon Alexa, and this is just an example of one of our coworkers using it, where you basically get our app exists in the Amazon Alexa store. You get it, and you just say, Alexa, read me the news. And it basically just reads you the eight things you need to know. You don't need that physical UI. So this concept is actually you know, future facing. And we could actually implement it in things like Google Home and Alexa. And um, this actually informed other decisions. This is actually an experience that we based off of eight things you need to know that we released last week, which is very same, similar paradigm. And um, it's accessible by this link. It's a very similar experience, but we used this AM to inform future experiences and future projects that we work on. Um, so you could access that link there. It's a very similar experience to, eight, this, the, to the eight things you need to know this AM. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you. So thanks a lot. I yeah. think the application is stunning. So yeah. my, my congratulation. And uh, uh, is there anybody who has a question for James here, which came from New York City and is eager to answer to them. Uh, because maybe I have one. So in your talk, you uh, talked that uh, you define success. Whoop. Whoop. OK. What process do you use to define it, to define success? Do you use some techniques or some other stuff? Hypothesis. So if you, you have a hypothesis and you try and verify that through user tests. So for us, we had a hypothesis about what, what is the best uh, experience that we want for a user. And we just want to give them something that they could look at every single day. And if that is the desired action that we want them to take, then we try and look at like what metric matches up with that and what is actually measurable. And that repeated app opens is an actual measurable Thing. So if you could match those two things up, a desired action yeah, and a metric to measure it, then that's basically what you use. And then you kind of use uh, user tests and analytics to verify that that is a good thing. And it, we also use it based on what metrics that advertisers like. Okay, yeah. So if it, it's a really juicy metric that advertisers say, well, we'll give you a lot of money if that's actually what you're doing, we also like to target those types of success metrics. Okay. Uh, the reason why I was asking you, because uh, sometimes we use uh, 
uh, game storming technique, which is called cover story, to define success like in a broader way. Yeah. And so I was curious if, uh, by any chance, that would be your case too. But uh, that would be too too fortunate. Yeah, like, ours. As a coincidence. They're, they're mainly advertiser focused too. Okay. So we kind of look towards those things, like what is our sales team selling? How are they selling it? If they say, oh, our app gets this many opens per week, if that's what okay. they're using, then we try and look at those things also to craft our user experience. Sounds good. Any other question? No questions. So if we are ready, we can go on. OK. Thanks a lot, Jim James. Big round of applause. Double, because he flew, he flew here.